or respiration in plant. All of us need to live, but why is breathing so essential to life? What happens when we breathe? Also, do all living organisms, including plant and microbes, breathe? If so, how? All living organisms need energy for carrying out daily life activities, be it absorption, transport, movement, reduction, reproduction, or even breathing. Where does all this energy come from? We know we eat food for energy, but how is this energy taken from food? How is this energy utilized? Do all food give the same amount of energy? Do plants eat? Where do plants get their energy from? And microorganisms for their energy requirement, do they eat food? You may wonder at the several questions raised above, they may seem to be very disconnected, but in reality the process of breathing is very much connected to the process of release of energy from food. Let us try to un try and understand how this happens. All the energy required for life process is obtained by oxidation of some micromolecules that we call food. Only green plants and cyanobacteria can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. They trap light energy and convert it into chemical energy that is stored in the bond of carbohydrate like glucose, sucrose and starch. We must remember that in green plant too, not all cell, tissues and organs photosynthesizes. Only cell containing chloroplast that are most often located in the superficial layer carry out photosynthesis. Hence, even in green plant, all other organs, tissues and cells that are non-green need food for oxidation. Hence, food has to be translocated to all non-green parts. Animals are heterotrophic, that is, they obtain food from plants. Directly herbivorous or indirectly carnivorous. Saprophytes like fungi are dependent on dead and decaying matter. What is important to recognize is that ultimately all food that is respired for life processes comes from photosynthesis. This chapter deals with cellular respiration or the mechanism of breakdown of food materials within the cell to release energy and trapping of this energy for synthesis of it. Photosynthesis of course takes place within the chloroplast in the eukaryotes where breakdowns of complex molecules to yield energy take place in the cytoplasm and in the mitochondria. Also only in eukaryotes. The breaking of the CC bond of complex compounds through oxidation within the cell leading to release of, of considerable amount of energy is called respiration. The compounds that are oxidized during this process are known as respiratory substrate. Usually carbohydrates are oxidized to release energy, but protein, fat and even organic acid can be used as respiratory substrates in some plants under certain conditions. During oxidation within a cell, all the energy content in respiratory substrate is not released free into the cell or in a single state. It is released in a series of slow stepwise reaction controlled by enzyme and it is kept as chemical energy in the form of ATP. Hence, it is important to understand that the energy released by oxidation in respiration is not or rather cannot be used directly but is used to synthesize ATP which is broken down whenever and wherever energy need to be utilized. Hence, ATP acts as the energy currency of the cell. This energy tapped in ATP is utilized in various energy requiring processes of organism and the carbon skeleton 
produced during respiration is used as precursor of for biosynthesis of other molecule in the cell do plant drink well the answer to this question is not quite so direct yes plant require oxygen for respiration to occur and they also give out carbon dioxide hence plant have in system in place that ensure the availability of oxygen plant unlike animal have no special organ for gastric exchange but they have stomata and lenticels for this purpose there are several reason why plant can get alone without respiratory organ first each plant part take care of its own gas exchange it need there is very little transport of gases from one plant part to another second plant do not present great demands for gas exchange roots stems and leaves respire at rates far lower than animals can do only during photosynthesis are large volume of gases exchange and each leaf is well adapted to take care of its own need during this period when cells photosynthesize availability of oxygen is not a problem in the cell since oxygen is released within the cell third the distance that gases must diffuse even in large bulky plant is not great each living cell in a plant is located quite close to the surface of the plant this is true for leaves you may ask but what about thick woody stem and roots in stem the living cell are organized in thin layer inside the beneath the bark they also have openings called lenticels the cells in the interior are dead and provide only mechanical support thus most cells of a plant have a have at least a part of their surface in contact with air this is also facilitated by the loose packing of parenchyma cell in leaves stems and roots which provide an interconnected network of air passages the complete combustion of glucose which produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen and water as end product yield energy most of which is given out as heat c6h12o6 plus 6o2 after reaction 6 carbon dioxide 6 co2 plus 6h2o plus energy if there this energy is to be useful to the cell it should be able to utilize it to synthesize other molecules that the cell require the strategy that the plant cell uses is to catabolize the glucose molecule in sh- such a way that not all the liberated energy goes out as heat the key is to oxidize glucose not in one step but in several small steps enabling some steps to be charged large enough such that the energy released can be coupled to atp synthesis how this is how this is done is essentially the story of respiration during the process of respiration oxygen is utilized and carbon dioxide water and energy are released as product the combustion reaction require oxygen but some cell live where oxygen may or may not be available can you think of such situation and organism where oxygen is not available there are sufficient reason to believe that the first cell on this planet lived in an atmosphere that lacked oxygen even among present day living organism we note of several that are adapted to anaerobic condition some of these organism are facultative anaerobic while in others the requirement for anaerobic condition is obligate in any case all living organism retain the enzymatic machinery to partially oxidize glucose without the help of oxygen 
this breakdown of glucose to pyruvic acid is called glycolysis glycolysis the term glycolysis has originated from greek word glycos for sugar and lysis for splitting the scheme of glycolysis was given by gustav emden otto meyerhoff and j parnas and is often referred to as emp pathway and in anaerobic organism it is the only process in respiration glycolysis occur in the cytoplasm of the cell and is present in all living organism in this process glucose undergoes partial oxidation to form two molecules of pyruvic acid in plant this glucose is derived from sucrose which is the end product of photosynthesis or from storage carbohydrates sucrose is converted into glucose and fructose by the enzyme invertase and these two monosaccharides readily enter the glycolytic pathway glucose and fructose are phosphorylated phosphorylated to give rise to glucose 6 phosphate by the activity of the enzyme phosphokinase this phosphorylated form of glucose then isomerizes to produce fructose 6 phosphate subsequent steps of metabolism of glucose and fructose are seen the various steps of glycolysis are depicted in figure in glycolysis a chain of chain reaction under the control of different enzyme take place to produce pyruvate from glucose while studying the steps of glycolysis please note the steps at which utilization or, or synthesis of atp or in this case nadp plus is ion take place atp is utilized at two steps first in the conversion of glucose into glucose 6 phosphate and second in the conversion of fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1 6 biphosphate the fructose 1 6 biphosphate is split into dihydroxy acetone phosphate and 3 phospho glyceraldehyde pgl we find that there is one step where nadp plus h ion is formed from nadp nad ion this is then this is when 3 phospho glyceraldehyde is converted to 1 3 by phosphoglycerate dpga two redox equivalent are removed in the form of two hydrogen atom from pgal and transferred to a molecule of nad plus nad ion pgal is oxidized and with inorganic phosphate to get converted into dpga the conversion of bpga to c phosphor phospho glyceric acid pga is also an energy yielding process this energy is trapped by the forming of formation of atp another atp is synthesized during the conversion of pep to pyruvic acid can you then calculate how many atp molecules are directly synthesized in this pathway from one glucose molecule pyruvic acid is then the key product of glycolysis what is the metabolic fate of pyruvate this depends on the cellular need there are three major way in which different cells handle pyruvic acid produced by glycolysis these are lactic acid fermentation alcoholic fermentation and anaerobic respira- and aerobic respiration fermentation takes place under anaerobic condition in many prokaryotes and unicellular eukaryotes for the complete oxidation of glucose to carbon dioxide and water however organism adapt krebs cycle which is also called an aerobic respiration this requires oxygen supply fermentation in fermentation say by yeast the incomplete oxidation of glucose is achieved under anaerobic condition by 
set of reaction where pyruvic acid is converted to carbon dioxide and ethanol. The enzyme pyruvic acid can decarboxylate and alcohol dehydroxygenase catalyze this reaction. Other organisms like some bacteria produce lactic acid from pyruvic acid. The steps involved are shown in figure. In animal cell also, like muscles during exercise, when oxygen is inadequate for cellular respiration, pyruvate, uh, pyruvic acid is reduced to lactic acid by lactate dehydrogenase. The reducing agent is NADP, NADH plus H ion, which is re-oxidized to NAD ion in both processes. In both lactic acid and alcohol fermentation, not much energy is released. Less than 7% of the energy in glucose is released and not all of it is trapped as high energy bond of ATP. Also, the process of hazardous either acid or alcohol is produced, which is the net ATP that is synthesized, calculate how many ATP are synthesized and deduct the number of ATP. Utilized during glycolysis, when one molecule of glucose is fermented to alcohol or lactic acid, it poison themselves to death when the concentration of alcohol reaches about 13 percent. What then would be the maximum concentration of alcohol in beverages that are naturally fermented? How do you think alcoholic beverage of alcohol contain greater than this concentration are obtained? What then is the process by which organism can carry out complete oxidation of glucose and extract the energy stored to synthesize a large number of ATP molecules needed for cellular metabolism. In eukaryotes, these steps take place within the mitochondria and this requires oxygen. Aerobic respiration is the process that leads to a complete oxidation of organic substances in presence of oxygen and release carbon dioxide, water and large amount of energy present in the substrate. This type of respiration is the most common in higher organisms. We will look at this process in the next section. Aerobic respiration. For aerobic respiration to take place within the mitochondria, the final product of glycolysis pyruvate is transferred from the cytoplasm into mitochondria. The crucial event in aerobic respiration are the complete oxidation of pyruvate by the uh, removal of all the hydrogen atom leaving three molecules of carbon dioxide. The Passing on the electron removed as part of hydrogen atom to molecular oxygen with simultaneous synthesis of ATP. What is interesting, what is interesting to note is that the first process takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria while the second process is located on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Pyruvate which is formed by lytic catabolism of carbohydrates in the Cytosol. After it enters mitochondrial matrix, undergoes oxidative decarboxylation by a complex set of reaction catalyzed by pyruvic deoxygenase. The reaction catalyzed by pyruvase, pyruvic dehydrogenase requires the participation of several coenzymes, including NAD ion and coenzyme A. Pyruvic acid plus coenzyme A plus NAD ion with magnesium pyruvate dehydrogenous enzyme acetyl coenzyme plus carbon dioxide plus NADH plus enzyme. During this process, two molecules of NADH are produced from the metabolism of two molecules of pyruvic acid produced from one glucose molecule during glycolysis. The acetyl CoA then enters a cyclic pathway, tricarboxylic acid cycle, more commonly called a Krebs cycle after the scientist Hans Krebs who first elucidated it. Tricarboxylic acid cycle. The TCA cycle starts with the condensation of acetyl group with oxaloacetic acid and water to yield cyclic acid. The reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme. enzyme Cited synthesize the uh, molecule of CoA is released. Cited is then isomerized to isocitrate. 
it is followed by two successive stages of decarboxylation leading to formation of alpha ketoglucaric acid and then succinyl coa in the remaining stages of cyclic acid cycle succinyl coa is oxidized to oxaloacetic acid allowing the cycle to continue leading the conversion of succinyl coa to succinic acid a molecule of gtp is synthesized this is a substrate level phosphorylation in a coupled reaction gtp is converted to gdp with the simultaneous synthesis of atp from adp also there are three points in the cycle where nad ion is reduced to nadh plus h ion and one point where FAD ion is reduced to FADH2. The continued oxidation to acetyl CoA via the TCA cycle requires the continued replenishment of oxaloacetic acid, the first member of the cycle. In addition, it also requires regeneration of NAD ion and FAD ion from NADH and FADH2 respectively. The summary equation for these phases of respiration may be written as follows. Pyruvic acid plus 4 NAD ion plus 4 F plus FAD ion plus 2 H2O plus ADP plus PI. Mitochondrial matrix after reaction 3 carbon dioxide 4 NADH plus 4 H ion plus FAD H2 plus ATP. We have till now seen that glucose has been broken down to release carbon dioxide and 8 molecules of NADH plus H ion, two of which FADH2 have been synthesized beside just two molecules of ATP in a TCA cycle. You may be wondering why we have been discussing respiration at all. Neither oxygen has come into picture nor the promised large number of ATP has yet been synthesized. Also, what is the role of NADH plus H ion and FADH2 that is synthesized? Let us now understand the role of oxygen in the respiration and how ATP is synthesized. Electron transport system, ETS, the oxidative phosphorylation. The following steps in the respiratory processes are to release the utilize the energy stored in NADH plus H ion and FADH2. This is accomplished when they are oxidized through the electron transport system and electrons are passed on to O2 resulting in the formation of water. The metabolic pathway through which the electron passes from one carrier to another is called the electron transport system and it is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Electron from NADH Produced in the mitochondrial matrix during cytic acid cycle are oxidized by an NADH dehydrogenase complex one and electron are then transferred to EUQ known located within the inner membrane. EUQ known also receives reducing equivalent via FADH2 complex 2 that is generated during oxidation of succinate in the cytic acid cycle. The reduced or EVQNOL is then oxidized with the transfer of electrons to cytochrome C via cytochrome BC1 complex, complex C. Cytochrome C is a small protein attached to the outer surface of the inner membrane and act as a mobile carrier. For transfer of electrons between complex 3 and 4, Complex 4 refers to cytochrome C oxidase complex containing cytochrome A and A3 and two copper centers. When the electron passes from one carrier to another via complex 1 to from 4 in the electron transport chain, they are coupled to ATP synthesis complex 5 for the production of ATP and ADP and or inorganic phosphate. The number of ATP molecules synthesized depends on the nature of electron donor. Oxidation of one molecule of NADH gives rise to three molecules of ATP. While 
that of one molecules of FADH2 produce two molecules of ATP. Although the aerobic process of respiration takes place only in the presence of oxygen, the role of oxygen is limited to terminal stage of the process. Yet, the presence of oxygen is vital since it drives the whole process by, process by removing hydrogen from the system. Oxygen acts as the final hydrogen receptor, acceptor, unlike photophosphorylation where it is the light energy that is utilized for production of, of proton gradient required for photophosphorylation. In respiration, it is the energy of oxidation reduction utilized for same processes. It is for this reason that the process is called oxidative phosphorylation. You have already studied about the mechanism of membrane link ATP synthesis as explained by chemiosmotic hypothesis in the earlier chapter. As mentioned earlier, the energy released during the electron transport system is utilized in synthesizing ATP with the help of ATP synthesis complex 5. This complex consists of two major components F1 and F0. The F1 headpiece is a peripheral membrane protein complex and contains the site for synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. F0 is an integral membrane protein complex that forms the channel through which proton cross the inner membrane. The passage of proton through the channel is coupled to catalytic site of the F1 component for the production of ATP. For each ATP produced, to H ion passes through F0 from the intermembrane phase to the matrix down the electrochemical proton gradient. Respiration balance it. It is possible to make calculation of the net gain of ATP for every glucose molecule oxidized, but in reality this can remain only a theoretical exercise. This calculation can be made only on certain assumptions that there is a sequential orderly pathway functioning with one substrate form forming the next and with glycolysis. This is a cycle and ETS pathway following one after another. The NADA is synthesized in glycolysis is transferred into the mitochondria and undergoes oxidative phosphorylation. None of the intermediates in the pathway are utilized to synthesize any other compounds. Only glucose is being respired no other alternative substrate are entering in the pathway at any of the intermediary stages. But this kind of assumption are not really valid in a living system. All pathway work simultaneously and do not take place one after another. Substrate enter the pathway and are withdrawn from it as and when necessary. ATP is utilized, uh, utilized as and when needed. Enzymatic rates are controlled by multiple means. Yet, it is useful to do this exercise to appreciate the beauty and efficiency of the living system in extraction and storing energy. Hence, there can be a net gain of 38 ATP molecules during aerobic respiration of one molecule of glucose. Now, let us compare fermentation and aerobic respiration. Fermentation accounts for only a partial breakdown of glucose, whereas in aerobic, Respiration, it is completely dictated to carbon dioxide and water. In fermentation, there is a net gain of only two molecules of ATP for each molecule of glucose degraded to pyruvic acid, whereas many more molecules of ATP are generated under aerobic condition. NADH is oxidized to NAD ion rather slowly in fermentation. However, the reaction is very vigorous in case of aerobic respiration. Amphibolic pathway. Glucose is favored substrate for respiration. All carbohydrates are usually first converted into glucose before they are used for respiration. Other substrate can also be respired, as has been mentioned earlier, but they, then they do not enter in the respiratory pathway at the first step. See the figure 14.6 to see the point of entry of different substrate in the respiratory pathway. Fat would need to be broken down into glyceryl and fatty acid first. 
if fatty acid were to be restored, they would first be degraded to acetyl CoA and enter the pathway. Glycerol would enter the pathway after being converted to PGAL. The protein would be degraded to protease and the individual amino acid after deamination, depending on their structure, would enter the pathway at some stage within the Krebs cycle or even pyruvate or acetyl CoA. Since respiration involves breakdown of substrate, the respiratory process has traditionally been considered a catabolic process and the respiratory pathway as a catabolic pathway. But is this understanding correct? We have discussed above at which point in the respiratory pathway different substrate would enter if there were to be respired and used to derive energy. What is important to recognize is that it is the very compound that would be withdrawn from the respiratory pathway for the synthesis of the said substrate. Hence, fatty acid would be broken down to acetyl CoA before entering the respiratory pathway when it is used as a substrate. But when the organism need to synthesize fatty acid, acetyl CoA would be withdrawn from the respiratory pathway for it. Hence, the respiratory pathway comes into the picture both during breakdown and the synthesis of fatty acid. Similarly, during breakdown and synthesis of protein to respiratory intermediates form, form the link, breaking down process within the living organism is catabolism and the synthesis is anabolism because the respiratory pathway involved involved in both anabolism and catabolism, it would be hence be better to consider the respiratory pathway as an anabolic pathway rather than as a catabolic one. Respiratory question. Let us now look at another aspect of respiration. As you know, during aerobic respiration, O2 is consumed and carbon dioxide is released. The ratio of volume of carbon dioxide evolved to volume of oxygen consumed in the respiration is called respiratory quotient RQ or respiratory ratio. RQ equals volume of carbon dioxide evolved divided by volume of carbon oxygen consumed. The respiratory quotient depends upon the type of respiratory substrate used during respiration. When carbohydrates are used as substrate and are completely oxidized, the RQ will be 1. Because equal amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen are evolved and consumed respectively, as shown in the equation below, glucose plus 6 oxygen, other reaction 6 carbon dioxide plus 6 water molecule plus energy, RQ is equal to 6 carbon dioxide divided by 6 oxygen is equal to 1. When fat are used in respiration, the RQ is less than 1 calculation of for a fatty acid type. Palmitin is used as substrate in shown two type palmitin plus 145 oxygen, oxygen 102 carbon dioxide, 98 water molecule and energy. RQ equal to 102 carbon dioxide divided by 145 oxygen equal to 0.7. When protein are used, a respiratory substrate then the ratio would be about 0.9. What is important to recognize is that in living organism, respiratory substrate are often more than one. Pure proteins or, or fat are never used as respiratory substrate.